Hi, my name is Nina Soroka, and this is the third part of my Gospel Communications Project. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and listen to this amazing story of God today. The story begins with God creating the heavens and the earth. He creates light and dark, land and water, the sky and the ground, plants, animals, and finally, a man and a woman. Um, he creates the perfect world for Adam and Eve to live in, um, with the free will so that they can love him on their own accord. Um, because he gives them free will, God also gives them a single rule that they must live by. They're allowed to eat from any tree um, in the garden except the tree of knowledge. Um, if they ate fruit from the tree of knowledge, they would die. Um, however, they're tricked by a serpent and end up eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge. Um, they suddenly feel ashamed because they know that what they did was sin. Um, Adam and Eve were no longer allowed to live in the Garden of Eden. Um, their perfect world was gone, and God sent them away from the Garden. Um, however, they, he did not abandon them. In fact, he was going to find a way to bring them back to the world that he had made. In Jeremiah 31, 34, it says, And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, and from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity, and I will remember their sin no more. Once Adam and Eve um, leave the garden, they have many descendants of their own. Um, one of them is called Abraham. God makes a covenant or a promise with Abraham that God would give him many descendants and that those children would come a blessing to all people. Um, this blessing that they were speaking of is the Messiah, whose um, who many prophets have been telling stories of. One prophet, Isaiah, says that a virgin will, will be with child and bear a son called Emmanuel, which translates to son of God. Another prophet, Micah, speaks of how the Messiah will be born and how this Messiah has already existed for an eternity, something of which only God is capable. Many years later, about 700 or so, a virgin woman named Mary is asked to give birth to the Son of God. She agrees to give birth to him, and once he is born, she names him Jesus. Just as Isaiah had said, a virgin gave birth to the Son of God, but now that he is fully a man, he will have the power to save us from our sin. Jesus grows up and lives a, perfect, a perfectly sinless life. Um, he performs miracles, has the power over death, um, amazingly the power to forgive sin as well. Um, to just name some things that he had accomplished, he turned water into wine, he walked on water, um, fed thousands of people with just a few loaves of bread and some fish, um, and he even raised a man from the dead. Uh, just as the prophet Micah had said, the Son of God was born, and he, was already, he had already lived for an eternity. This means the Son of God is fully God. Now, th now that he is also flesh and blood, he is fully man. Uh, having lived a perfectly sinless life, he didn't deserve to die. Um, death is the result of sin, just like how Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden, and we're now fully aware of sin and death. Jesus was pure and a sinless man, and that's why he was able to sacrifice himself to save us all from sin. Um, the Romans, however, did not approve of Jesus, his teachings, or his acts. Um, they felt threatened by him and ended up putting him to death by crucifixion. Once he died, he was buried, and three days later, he rose from the dead. He was not a ghost, but a living man now. One of his disciples, Thomas, uh, even asked for proof, and he was able to touch Jesus' wounds from the crucifixion to show that he was fully alive. Um, he lived again after this, reaching out to his disciples and many people, and 40 days later, he ascended back into heaven to be with his Father. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He will come back to this world just as he left for the second coming. Um, in order to join him, we need to ask for forgiveness from our sin and have faith in and believe in God. Mark 1.15 says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. After this, we will live for eternity in the new Eden with God. Um, Revelation 21.4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there
and there shall be no more death, sorrow, or crying. Neither shall there be any pain, for the former things are passed away. Uh, it's just so amazing that this story is still happening and that we're in the middle of it right now. And it's so great to think that one day all sin will be forgotten and the death will be gone and leave us in a new perfect kingdom.